Your pet would like to have a word with you. In fact, your dog, cat, bird, horse, fish, even bearded dragon would like to have an entire conversation with you. But having that trans-species discussion is difficult without an interpreter or go-between. A specifically skilled individual who's been communicating with our animal friends for more than three decades. Bridging gaps in understanding. Elevating relationships. Building peace and harmony among all Earth's creatures. That person is Susan Vaughn, the Animal Whisperer. And this episode is An Indoor Cat Longs for the Great Outdoors. I'm Susan Vaughn. Brittany heard a faint cry somewhere outside of her house in San Jose, California. She recognized it as the sound of a tiny kitten in distress. So she put on her detective hat and went searching. Inside a storage shed filled with scrap metal, the tiny tabby kitten cried out for help. She was two weeks old when Brittany found her. Enticing her with tuna, Brittany eventually scooped her up, brought her inside, and named her Bella Bubbles. She was scared and defensive, hissing a warning to the giant human. But eventually, she understood that this human was there to love and care for her. Brittany received the gift of a session with me as a New Year's gift, and the conversation between myself, Bella Bubbles, and Brittany took place when the cat was 12 years old. There was tremendous affection between cat and human, but even though she had been an indoor cat since the day her human mom brought her inside over a decade before, Bella had never forgotten what it was like to be out in nature. Brittany had concerns for her cat's safety, but the collar she'd tried just didn't seem to be the answer. We have tried to get her in a harness, though, and because she's never worn a collar, because she's been indoors her whole life, um, she obviously hated the harness. Um, but I don't feel like I wouldn't let her outside. I'm not going to just go to open the door and let her roam free. <laughs> um, can we come to like, I don't know, an agreement or like I have a backyard, like little porch that I could take her out on. Um, she's almost never, ever been outside, but I'd be totally down to do it. She wants to let you know that when you put a harness on her, you take away every possible way of her protecting herself. Her way of protecting herself is to run away or run up a tree, and you take every defense mechanism she has away. That's true. So she right. would like to offer a different proposal, which is, how about if you just trust me? All right. We can go out back together. <laughs> we, I'm down with that. Okay, now, Brittany, you can ask her to do certain things. Stay in a particular geographic area. Stay in the yard. Stay between these areas. Stay within my eyesight. Make sure you come in by a certain time. Come when I call you. All of these deals can be made. Uh, yeah, as long as she stays within eye shot of me, and then we can go back in together. Like, I'm down with, we go out together, we come back in together. Okay. She says, okay, when I express my joy of being out there and run into the grass a little bit, you're not going to freak out, right? I'll probably be a little scared. <laughs> no, our backyard was really not that big. <laughs> I, there's, not a, there's not a whole lot back there. I think, I think I'll be okay. So her experience out there would be roll in the grass, chase a bug, feel the dirt, be directly on the earth. Um, is there, okay, now this one's silly. So her nails get so long and she gets stuck in all the bedding and she hates having them trimmed. And I don't know how to communicate to her that she wouldn't get stuck in everything if she just let me cut her nails. <laughs> or like, is there a way I can make that better for her? Okay, let me tell her that's why you do it. Just a moment. I sent a picture to Bella of her claws getting caught in fabric. I showed her how it was when she tried to shake off the quilts and covers. I let her know with telepathic pictures that for humans, it was hard to see her struggle, and it was also difficult to have our fabric shredded. She understood the communication. She says, oh, okay, I understand why she does it, and 
I would do that naturally if I had a tree with the bark on it. That's how I would handle it. So it's very unnatural how the humans handle it. She says, I do understand now why she does it. So I won't get caught in things. I could get her a little real tree in here. She probably wouldn't. She'd probably throw all the bark everywhere. <laughs> it's a messy proposition. There's no doubt about that. Oh, does she have any like core memories? She'll be 13 in June. So I feel like I've had her through all the most important parts of my life. And we've lived all over the country. She says, my favorite memory is the affection that we share. She says, I didn't really understand that about humans, about human love, about exchanging love with humans. That wasn't really in my wheelhouse, so to speak. I didn't understand that was even really a possibility. So my fondest feeling about you is one of love and affection and the exchanging of that between humans and animals. A new experience. She says, I'm okay with moving around. I've been really actually pretty good about that. Normally cats would have a lot of problems with that, but I'm really quite anchored or quite grounded with my person as long as i'm with my person and i have these smells and this love going back and forth uh, i can really get through a move she's been on an airplane but i don't know if she understood she was on an airplane <laughs> but she <laughs> but she was so fine and you were good in the airport and we even had a layover uh let me ask her about it she says even that wasn't so bad because we were together and I knew we were going to end up in the same place. Cats often report to me, that is the weirdest experience, being that far off of the earth and I get very disoriented. She doesn't really have that to report. Let's see. She, yeah, she's always been great at travel. She's always been great with the car. Um, she, there's another cat that lives here and his name is Sage. And Sage has been with us for probably seven years, and I think she hates him. <laughs> and, uh, like when when Sage first came to us, he was like a little kitten, and I just thought that maybe she needed a friend, and I didn't realize that cats don't usually need friends. And it's been about seven years, and I still feel like she can't stand him. Is there anything I could do to make that easier for her? She says, I don't really dislike him, but I do like to mess with him. <laughs> yeah, she smacks him around when he's asleep. She says, the thing that would make that easier for me is spending time in nature, where I could be with my feet on the grass, I could climb a tree, I could stalk, pounce, hunt. That would <clears throat> dilute my attention on him and create a much more exciting life for me and more fulfilling. There was a mouse in here days ago and she did nothing. She did nothing. <laughs> Miss, I want to chase a bug. Didn't want anything to do with the mouse. I picked the mouse up and took it outside. Okay. Wow. She says, I was, I said, what, it, what is that about? You don't have any <laughs> instinct. That's really different. She said, well, my mom is really about harmony in the household. She likes other creatures. And I felt that it would be, disturbing to her if the mouse were hurt and uh i was mostly just curious about it yeah i don't have a big prey instinct but i am stimulated by nature uh, stimulated by bugs and so forth but i just mainly am a voyeuristic cat i just like to watch them watch the birds watch the bugs all right i will hang back if you got to do what you have to do and then it was just a little mouse sitting there looking at us. And I'm like, okay, if you're not going to kill it, I'm just going to pick him up and put him outside. And he was a very polite mouse. So I'm happy he got to live another day. <laughs> well, he allowed you to pick him up. Yeah. And pet his little head. Everybody was super friendly. Does she, does she have any arthritis coming on? Does she have any like pains I don't know about? 
um i like i get her yearly blood work and but some of the things that i will ask the vet like the vet's like i have no way of knowing like things like is are her joints getting old okay she says no i'm very sound but i could really get into some tuna some salmon i could really enjoy a little salmon oil i need a little bit of oil i feel like She's always liked the water that came off of the can of tuna. This more than like, or like maybe a little bit of the shreds. Um, I tried, I tried giving her caviar over uh, maybe like Christmas Eve. I'm like, oh, I have caviar. Do you want some? She did not want some. She did not care for the caviar. I was like, this is very expensive, but fine. Turn your nose up at it. <laughs> It's a little salty, she said, for her. I can get her salmon oil is a good idea. It's like the dry months over in Philadelphia. So I feel like all of us are getting a little dandruffy. <laughs> she doesn't seem to play with toys very often. Um, is there any, does she want more enrichment in some way in the home? Like, when I go to work, does she want me to leave the TV on? Like, I have, like, movies for cats where it's, like, it's, like, HD video of, like, birds at a bird feeder. And Sage, who I call her brother that she hates, Sage loves it. He will watch it. She does not watch TV. Uh, she says she's sensitive to the electronic output of the TV. But she would love to have a real bird feeder or real nature outside of a window. And it would be even better if she could watch it from very high up. She loves being high up. So she says in her best life, there would be little shelves all around the house that would be very close to the ceiling that she could jump from thing to thing. And then if she could look out a window to see wildlife in action those would be really the best life the uh the wildlife in uh the center city philadelphia is limited but we do have we do have some squirrels we do have some birds um but yeah she's always loved being high up why does she hate her flea drops is it because they smell bad yeah she says because it fills her mouth with the taste of gasoline. It does smell like gasoline, too. You're not wrong, Belle. Like, is there something that she wants to tell me that I haven't, like, thought about yet? Yes. She says, I want her to know I don't hate the other cat. I just don't have a lot of other focus, and so I like to mess with it. It's because I don't have a lot of other stimulation. I'm not much of a player. And I would love to play with more natural substances. For example, um, two feathers that are tied together at the middle with a rubber band or a little Love branch that. with leaves on it or a uh, log. She also says, look at my mom is asking you to tell her like my best life and i'm telling you that but i want her to know that my life is good anyway i've been thinking about gr getting the cat grass mats and growing it well that would be great she would love to roll around in that my life is good we have a great affection we have good communication uh we love each other we live in a safe place I can see nature. I would love to see more. Put out a uh, bird feeder, a squirrel feeder, and I'm I'm loving that. And bring some nature inside. But I want her to know life is really good. I'm glad. She says she's an emotional support cat. She is an emotional support cat. <laughs> not not legally, but definitely uh, definitely in practice. She says uh, she's been your longest relationship. <laughs> facts. Absolute, genuine facts. She's seen so many of them, too. Okay. Um. Wait, okay. 
does does Bell have a name for me? Like, does you know what I mean? Like, I call her Bella. I call her Bella Bubbles, or like a million nicknames. Does she have? Does she call me something? Let me see. Bella sent me more of a feeling than a name, a feeling of great affection and closeness with Brittany than an actual name. I called it more of a title. She doesn't exactly have a name, but she does have a title. She calls you my beloved person or my beloved human. Yes. <laughs> Yay, we're favorites. Well, thank you. This is awesome. Bella Bubbles was one of the most affectionate cats I've ever met. She allowed Brittany to pet her, hug her, and touch her continuously throughout our session. Bella basked in the communication and was happy to be able to return the love in spoken words her human could take in. This wonderful cat had found happiness inside with her human, but offered ideas on how Brittany could bring some of nature inside the house as a compromise. These included a large plant where Bella could lay in the soil under the leaves, some branches, a square of sod in a litter pan, and a bird feeder outside the window. Brittany said she would do anything the cat asked, and Bella worked with her on compromises that both of them could live with. These beloved companions continue to share great affection and appreciation for one another, and the communication cemented their bond on a deeper soul level. For more episodes in the series, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. To learn all about Susan Vaughn and her services, visit her website at animalwhisperer.net. Be part of the community by subscribing to her Facebook page, animalwhisperer.net. Then sign up for Susan's newsletter to enjoy more of her fascinating animal-human communication stories. So, until next time, join Susan as she talks to the animals on The Animal Whisperer.